It is no secret that the Boston Herald's Howie Carr is one of the more conservative columnists in town. But as Carr covers the U.S. Senate race between Democratic incumbent Elizabeth Warren and her Republican challenger, Jeff Deal, he is pushing the boundaries of just how cozy a commentator and a candidate should be. Back when State Rep Jeff Deal was still thinking about running for Senate, he got a big favor from Howie Carr, who handed Deal the reins to his talk show. Rump swabs, hacks, and moon bats beware. It's... Howie Carr. Jeff Deal in for Howie Carr, actually. Now Deal is the Republican nominee, and Carr is still helping him out. Last month, Carr hosted a Deal fundraiser headlined by Herman Cain at his home in Wellesley. Next week, Carr holds a Women for Deal fundraiser at his studio and headlines another Deal event in Springfield. Now, no one expects Carr to be neutral in the race between Deal and Elizabeth Warren. You know Elizabeth Warren, right? Appointed commentary is one thing. Raising money is something else. Eight years ago, Fox News actually nixed Sean Hannity's plan to broadcast his show from a Tea Party fundraiser. But there's no indication the Herald has a problem with Carr's role in Deal's campaign, which isn't disclosed when he talks about the race. The Pointer Institute's Rick Edmonds thinks that is a mistake. The highest main function of newspapers is to inform citizens in a democracy and to hold government and politicians accountable. I really don't think you can make the case that you're doing that if you allow undisclosed involvement in the political process. But for talk radio hosts, he adds, the rules are different. They may or may not choose to describe themselves as journalists. Which raises the question, how do we describe Howie Carr? Just to be clear, we tried to get a comment from Joe Shaka, the editor of the Boston Herald. I do not believe we've heard back from him. Or from Digital First, the new parent company of the Herald, uh, which I tried and, and failed to get a comment from. Mm -hmm. For me, the, the big error here is on the Herald's part, that they are allowing him to go fundraise for a candidate as he writes about the race, and that, which I don't think they should do, period, that there is no disclaimer whatsoever. Now, if you read Howie Carr's column, you might know that he's doing this, but I just think as a matter of principle, it's one thing to write in a complimentary manner about a candidate, knock their opponent. It happens across the political spectrum. I think it's really fundamentally different when you get into raising cash. And that's what he's doing here. I can't think of a, another example mm -hmm. of a columnist at a Metro Daily in a big city doing this. And it, it kind of blows me away that so many people aren't, flabbergasted or are more flabbergasted. I completely about. agree with you. Not only do I think a disclosure is needed since he might not be a journalist when he's doing his talk show, but when he's appearing as a columnist representing the Boston Herald, he is considered one even if he is not really following the rules of, of being one when he's um, on the air. But more than that, I, I don't think he should be writing about, about the race at all. I would pull someone off of it. If I can't put a lawn sign on my yard as a, when I was a copy editor because that would make the globe look biased, I don't see how you can write about a race and raise funds for yeah. one candidate while slamming another and making kind of racially tinged slurs and gestures and not disclose your support for that candidate. Dan, you're a longtime Howie Carr uh, student. Let me come to you on this. He's been doing this stuff for years. Uh, there's nothing new about this. When I saw that we were doing this segment, I thought I'd look up what I might have yep. written in the past. Sure enough, in 2010, he was uh, speaking at a fundraiser for the New Hampshire Republican State Committee mm -hmm. uh, without disclosing it and writing about Republican politics uh, in New Hampshire. So it's absolutely outrageous, but I don't think this is a new low. I think it's the same old thing. And I agree with Lila. I think that a disclosure... Uh, is almost absurd. He shouldn't be writing about things that he's involved in uh, as a political activist. He's the big money maker, though, yeah. right? Does he get more leeway because of that? Um, uh, yeah, wait, I more think leeway so. because of what? Being the big money maker for the Herald, I, big name. That's my assumption. Yeah. Well, well, are are we all going to agree here? We? No, he's the equivalent of uh, the the he's he's the too big to fail person ah. in the Boston Herald. They're hanging on by their fingernails, mm -hmm. uh, and the Herald. Uh, I think they know if they lose Howie, Howie Carr, they have essentially lost the game. They're they're gone, so they can't do anything to try it away. But there is not a journalistic convention that he hasn't at some point or another trampled upon, mm -hmm. and this is just you know. Know, one more indication of how, how outrageous he can be.
Kelly, what do you think? Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say what he said, except that the disclosure should be the very least thing that should be happening here. I mean, I think it's all outrageous, but the fact that there's no disclosure is just beyond. There are just no words for that. Mm -hmm. What do you all think about the idea that there are, uh, this was posited by Rick Edmonds, um, sort of tentatively, the idea that there are different rules for talk radio hosts and for newspaper columnists, that the former don't think of themselves as journalists. So if he weren't printing this column in the Herald, but you know he's just uh, distributed on a bunch of different stations around the country. Would it be okay then? I think it's a cop out. Mm -hmm. I mean, the line between information and infotainment is so blurred that people believe that Sean Hannity is a journalist, mm -hmm. and this is another example of that. It doesn't matter that he doesn't think himself as a of, as a journalist when he's on the air. It matters as whether or not he's acting like one, whether he has a platform and he's using it. By the way, we don't know what his self perception is. I, I think that uh, Rick Edmonds accurately defined. Uh, the role for talk show hosts these days, but that doesn't mean we have to like it. 